I'm humbled to introduce uh, Brian Kasky, our co-leader of the Colorado's Age 50 Employment Stat Strategies Project, uh, someone I've had the opportunity to work with for a number of years now, who brings so, so many ideas and passion and entrepreneurialism to, to this opportunity. So a little bit about Brian, uh, if that's not enough, co-leading this effort and the reason we're all here today. Uh, Brian Kasky, professor at University of Iowa, has studied the intersections between aging and work for more than 20 years. He's evaluated programs for aging workers in the states of Colorado, California, and Iowa. In 2017, Brian directed an investigation of America's older workforce for the United States Senate Special Committee on Aging. Uh, in, and importantly, uh, he is the reason we're here today. Uh, Brian? Well, good morning and thank you for that, Catherine. That was very nice of you. Um, as you all know, uh, with the support of the Next 50 initiative, we have spent the last two years out there in Colorado surveying the labor force landscape. And over those two years, uh, we built on our previous work. As, as you all know, Catherine's group is the Transamerica Center for Retirement Studies. Uh, my own work and, and several other academic researchers have taken a greater interest in the aging labor force over the years. And we've really built on our understanding by looking in detail at such a great state like Colorado, where you have this mix of people who are growing older, who were born and raised in Colorado and now have decided to stay there. But you're also having this great influx of retirees. People are really starting to see Colorado as a terrific retirement destination. And so as part of our work, we really got to know these individuals better. And in fact, that's where we've come up with the phrase experienced employees, because in working, for example, with changing the narrative group there in Colorado, we thought about different ways to conceptualize what the aging workforce looks like and, and what it wants and, and what it doesn't want. And then we looked at employers across Colorado. And as we've heard about today, we've identified several that have taken steps towards meeting the challenges and opportunities presented by this aging workforce. And our current research is now looking at, at the drivers of change. What makes one employer decide, yeah, I'm gonna move forward in this space uh, relative to another employer who's eh, thinking about it, but not quite ready to go there. And what we found so far is about mm, at best, one out of five employers have made a deliberate effort to move forward in responding to an aging workforce. Whether, as, as we just heard, it's by developing a recruitment strategy that's more age inclusive or by developing varied uh, retirement pathway options for people. And we're starting to make these statistical associations, right? Once we get enough employers to look at, we can start looking at, well, what makes one employer, whether it's, it's the size of the employer, the type of employer like, um, industries like healthcare, for example, already have a lot of persons who are over the age of 50. So they're already kind of tuned into these issues relative to, let's say, retail, um, where you may not have as many older adults in a, in a given retail outlet. So finally, our, our big goal is to, to figure out what can we do to nudge others along. So at the end of our, our last conference, we had this great idea. We were going to develop a consultancy in which we would mimic what we saw in the HR community. And that is we would come to employers and offer them our expertise, right? We spent our last conference basically laying out a process, if you will, for how organizations can move forward in this space. And we had about a dozen employers approach us after the last conference and said, yeah, we'd love for you all to come out to Colorado and spend up to 40 hours with us, right? A typical consultancy. Uh, one visit every quarter um, and, and walk us through what we could do. And then COVID hit, Ugh, right? Right at the end of this great conference, right at the time when we had all these uh, people who were interested in taking the next step forward, we got put into uh, our co non-travel to Colorado and had to spend our time in Iowa and California and other offices thinking about, well, what are we going to do now? 
And that's not necessarily always a good thing because as we sat around thinking about it, we realized our model wouldn't work. The idea of having persons come into firms and provide 40 hours of consultancy just, you know, it works for some, okay? It works for large corporations with, with large HR uh, companies coming in and helping them guide it through. But you know what? What we learned as part of our work is most HR and most company leadership just don't have the time. They have a lot of stuff on their plate. You know, it's not just the aging workforce that that has to be addressed, but all the other things. And COVID only seems to have added to that daily burden. So we said, OK, the idea of us actually asking someone to carve out 40 hours of a, of a schedule, it's going to be hard. We have to allow them to work at their own pace. Then we also realized, guess what? A lot of companies, most companies who employ, uh, employ an aging workforce, they're not huge companies. They're not multinational corporations. They don't have HR departments. It's usually a couple of folks who are in charge of everything, uh, both human resources and otherwise. And so we have to acknowledge that. We have to come up with an idea how to address that because that's the wheelhouse. So we came up with a pivot plan. And our pivot plan, of course, was to develop a website. So in the next few minutes, I plan to show you what this website is all about. And as I do this, I want you to take notice of some of the structures we spent a lot of time thinking about as we built this website, okay? And as you look at the website, one thing that I want you to, to recognize is how our research said people in organizations that are more likely to move forward and invest in an aging workforce, I love when social science confirms what we should already know. They're just more invested. They're more familiar with these issues. Maybe they themselves have been through an elder caregiving experience, or maybe they themselves know of a colleague who's decided to take a part-time position so they can spend more time with their grandkids. In other words, this stuff was in familiar to them intuitive. Our research also shows that a lot of these different employers, they just aren't in the same place. So to come to them with sort of a one size fit all consultancy and where you have to go here, 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 and here in order to advance your response to the aging workforce, it just doesn't work because some people have resources to do a lot of change initiatives. Others are, well, we'll try this and we'll try just one thing and we'll see how it goes. So we built this website to, to accommodate what we learned from our research. So what are we about? What we're really about with this website is we want you to use it and then be inspired and informed enough to move forward to change your workplace so it's more attractive as far as recruiting all experienced workers and retaining them and then providing them what we call a self-directed, mutually agreeable retirement pathway. And as our earlier speaker said, a lot of this is just raising awareness of the issue and communicating with it. So one way we also designed this website is we want it to be user-friendly. We really spent a lot of time working with folks. Um, we have a Colorado-based group that we've been working with to give us their input on the design of this because we want it to be easy for people to use and we want you to come back to it. So as I talk about some of the features in the website, um, just keep that in mind. So the first thing we do is, is we provide you with a bunch of different stories to read, right? So if you're not already familiar with the challenges and opportunities presented by an aging workforce, we have a different sort of hook strategy, if you will. We address issues related to cost. We address issues related to quality of productivity. And we weave those themes into these narratives. And we also present to you different people who are over age 50, right? This is people with families. These are people who want to return to work. These are people who may be experiencing challenges taking care of their parents. So what we do is we give you all sorts of stories to kind of read through, again, to get you engaged, to get you familiar with this stuff. And then we put you on a path. And if you notice at the end of every story, okay, we give you two clicks. And those two clicks say, all right, now that you've read this story, the question becomes, if you are engaged, 
you're going to say, well, what can I do about this? I mean, what is it that I can actually do to advance my company's response to an aging workforce? So those clicks will take you to the other part of our website, which is more what I call action oriented. So what we have are a couple of pages that lay out what our strategies and actions are. In all, we've developed 10 different strategies that a company can pick up on. You don't have to pick up on all 10, but just start picking up one and embedded within each one of those strategies are a total of 40 different actions you can take. So there's just a lot of stuff that you can move forward with in order to be responsive to your aging experience employee workforce. So again, we'd like to say too, that this is also built on our research base. We spent a lot of time going over all the different things employers were doing and sorting them and, and analyzing them. And so these are really distinct, really discreet opportunities for you to move forward. And the other interesting thing we're starting to find and that was referenced earlier is a lot of these start with DEI the notion of including older adults in your diversity, equity, and inclusion statements, because that's sort of the larger trend right now that is out there um, in the workforce. And there are people who are paying attention to these things are also starting to pay attention of what the aging workforce brings to their company. So by some way of examples of, of different strategies, okay, they can expand on existing efforts, right? Your company may be offering education and training options to, to younger employees, right? As we talked about earlier, but have you thought about also extending them to your aging or experienced employees? But there are other things too that are unique aspects of, of your aging workforce, such as caregiving responsibilities. Here in Iowa, we did a survey of our employees at the university, 15,000 of them. We found that people who are in the middle, right? Working age with families, actually have more living parents, right? In-laws, father, mother, than they do children. And they all are looking forward, how are they gonna take care of their parents to a greater extent now than how are they gonna take care of their children? What are our employers doing in this space? Well, we wanna also point out that they can build upon a lot of existing efforts. So in the case of the caregiving space, a lot of employers already have developed childcare strategies. Well, we just suggest to them bring on elder care strategies. Now, if you notice, the other action item we can do here for you is once you're into it and you're like, hey, I really get this caregiving narrative. I've been through it. I've really looked at what the strategy is, is gonna do for us. What do I actually do? So then you can go to our website and you'll follow these threads and it'll take you to what we call the self-assessment section. So when you hit the self-assessment section, we ask, essentially just ask you, here are the five, four or five things that we have found that employers are doing to advance the response for, for elder caregiving related issues. Which ones are you doing? Which ones are you not doing? Once you select those, then you can bounce to our actions page. Again, these all feed each other. So it's kind of nice. Once you finish one, it will take you to another. And then in this case, since we picked that we are already doing two things, we will then highlight the two things that you're not doing and may consider doing. And if you look at the bottom of, of these action step pages, they take you to viable examples. We have linked resources, we, you know, public access where you can go and learn even more about how you might develop an elder care strategy. So we're really excited about this website. And what we want to do next is basically pursue an agenda, what we call dissemination and implementation. And what that means is now that we've worked it out, we would love to recruit what we call our first generation of Ames, Colorado participants. So as you go forward after this conference and you decide, yeah, this is something I really want to look, look into more, we would love for you to contact us and let us know. We'd like to tell you more about accessing the website and also to let you know about a, an evaluation we'd like you to participate in. Because again, we'd like to know what works best so we can continue our efforts to spread how best practices can be adopted by employers to address the experienced workforce. Thanks. Thanks, Brian. Thanks, Brian. We had um, a really good question in the chat. 
Um, it relates to the website. And the question is, do we have success stories on the website yet? Uh, so that these opportunities feel like a must have among employers versus a nice to have. Oh, that's 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 that oh, double edged sword here. One, the answer is yes. We, we certainly do about the different stories or the hooks. So one of our hooks isn't just all about the, if you will, the financials, right? The cost benefits. There's also, here's success stories. Here's what it meant to the company. And so on one hand, we pulled those success stories based on previous research. So for example, when I was uh, working out in, in Washington, we uh, met with folks who led LLB. And we met with folks who uh, were leading Michelin Tire because both of those companies have just done extraordinary things with addressing their aging workforce and accommodating what experienced employees wanted. But hold on, as a part of this first generation of, of Ames, Colorado, if you will, participants, we'd love to hear your stories too. So one of the things we want to do with this website, and the reason why we want to have you all engage with us, is we want to build on it and make it even more specific and more, again, engaging for people from Colorado. We don't want this to be, oh, here's a company over in some other part of the world with all sorts of resources that I don't have access to. That doesn't engage you as much. But if you hear a story about, oh, here's a company up in Boulder that's doing this, it might lead you to connect with them or just have more engagement because you see a real example. So that's where we'd like to head with it. Yeah, absolutely, Brian. And we've had many conversations about this that a couple of the underpinnings of, or we'll say guiding principles of our work that we're doing in Colorado is first of all, we believe that success leads to more success. And we are on the lookout for case studies of success stories that we can help share because by spreading the word, uh, that's gonna inspire more employers to adopt age-friendly business practices. Um, and then the other thing, Brian, that you just touched on and uh, you know, sort of synchronicity, it was right about the time a question popped up in the chat and it was asking about Colorado. And this project is focused on Colorado. You'll, as you've seen in, in the website, as Brian has presented it, uh, we are very focused on the, what's happening in the state of Colorado, uh, because we believe that some of the best things that can possibly happen are grassroots. They come from collaborations among similarly aligned, passionate people in local areas. Of course, we would love for uh, employers across the country and other states to be as excited about this opportunity as we are and as Colorado is. Um, but right now, Ames, Colorado is all about Colorado. Um, yeah, and just to add to that, too, I, I, I just saw Joe pop up and, and Ramika, too. We, you need third parties, you know, um, you need your state government uh, to, to recognize this and do what they're doing, which is supporting efforts to advance. I mean, we can't all do this on our own. And then folks like Ramika, right? I, that's what we've learned is, is, boy, there's a lot of folks out there and organizations out there that are kind of built to do this stuff. It's just bringing the aging focus into their enterprise. And, and we think that's another way to elevate this. So that's again, why we think it's just incredibly important to keep it, what we call, keep it in Colorado.